Hey, Margie here. We've all heard about detoxification, how important it is. But what does it really mean? Where do we start? And why is it so important for our bones and overall health? Well, we'll be delving into these questions with our very special guest, Wendy Myers. And Wendy is the founder of MyersDetox.com. She's a detox expert, functional diagnostic nutritionist, and NES bioenergetic practitioner, as well as the number one best-selling author of Limitless Energy, How to Detox Heavy Metals to End Exhaustion and Chronic Fatigue. Additionally, Wendy is the host of the Heavy Metal Summit and two podcasts, the Myers Detox Podcast about protecting your health with detoxification and the Supercharged Podcast about bioenergetics passionate about the importance of detox to live a long and healthy life, she created revolutionary Myers Detox Protocol. After working with thousands of clients, as well as a range of supplements to help you detox from everyday living and maintain a healthy lifestyle. Welcome, Wendy. I'm really excited to have you here because this topic of detoxification is so important and something that really affects our bones and overall health. And it's not talked about, it's not something people learn from their doctor. And I just think you're gonna add so much to the equation that's gonna help so many people. So welcome. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. So you know what, I always love to hear the backstory because nobody just ended up where they are. So why don't you fill us in on how you got to be this detox expert and create all these amazing products. And why don't you tell us that story? How did that start? Yes. So, you know, I'm like a lot of people, you know, I take, you know, I spent a lot of time working on my health and taking really good care of myself. I've always been a big health enthusiast. And I was very confused at the age of 37 when I, I just had a baby, maybe this is a year after I'd had a baby and I just felt terrible. <laughs> and I took such good care of my health. I was really brain fogged. Um, I was having trouble losing weight. I was having trouble losing the baby weight. I was, uh, I mean, I was uh, like having bouts of rage, which is really unlike me. I was just kind of mildly depressed all the time, even though I had everything to be happy about. And uh, I just, I just got sick of feeling sick and tired and, and brain fog. So I went to my doctor and said, figure out what's wrong with me. It was a functional medicine doctor. So they ran lots of like nutrition tests and you know, tests you typically don't get at a, a conventional doctor's office. And um, she found out I had the hormone levels of a menopausal woman, which I was thrilled to hear about at 37. And I felt like I'm, I'm the prime of my life and yet uh, my hormones are just in the toilet. And so my thyroid hormones were low, my stress hormones were low and my sex hormones were all low. So all my estrogen, testosterone, progesterone. So she wanted me to, and like, you know, I'm like, okay, well that's, that must be what's the problem is. Um, but she didn't run any heavy metals tests or anything like that. And so I figured that on my own. And um, so she wanted to do hormone replacement therapy. And I thought, you know, that's just not how I envision my life at 37, you know? Um, so I decided to go on Dr. Google, like what causes low adrenal hormones, what causes low sex hormones. And I was finding things about like pesticides and, uh, you know, hormone mimicking chemicals and heavy metals, metalloestrogens like mercury and nickel and, and all these things and th things that I'd never really read about. You know, I'd read a lot about health since I was a teenager, but I, and I knew mercury was bad. I knew lead was bad, but I just didn't think that those things applied to me because I lived such a healthy lifestyle. And so I decided to do some heavy metals tests and I found out to my shock that I was very high in mercury. Um, I had arsenic, I had uranium, I had cesium, I had thallium. Um, I had, uh, I think arsenic, I don't think I mentioned that. And um, I was just, and uranium as well. I was just like, where did I get these things? And what are they doing to my body? And it just sparked this flood of research that I then just decided to start my own health website. And I started MyersHeTalks.com to report on what I was uh, researching and discovering. Wow. And since that time, I know you've helped so many people. It's, it's really quite amazing how this piece of it is just not brought up. It really is like the last piece. And that's what I find. I find 
almost nobody has any, any type of testing. Do you want to just say how this can affect your bones? Like why this is something that really should be a part of the evaluation and rarely is it? Yeah, so I'll go over all the different things that can affect uh, bone health. So number one, you need healthy levels of estrogen because estrogen will prevent bone loss. So there's heavy metals and toxins that interfere in your estrogen production. And so uh, there's lots of like xenoestrogens on the market. You know, there's, there's pesticides, there's plastics, there's BPA. Uh, there, uh, there's lots of different, um, you know, hormone mimicking, uh, like estrogen mimicking uh, toxins. Um, but there's also uh, metalloestrogens, there's mercury and nickel, and there's other metals that will kind of block your estrogen receptors and interfere in estrogen working properly in your body or reduce estrogen production as well. And so indirectly, uh, you know, by affecting estrogen, it can negatively impact your bone health and bone density. And then your bones are kind of used like garbage cans in your body. <laughs> your, you know, it's, they can, their body can tuck heavy metals away in your bones. So ne- the body namely puts uh, lead and aluminum in your bones. O- other metals can go in there as well, but I find lead is probably one of the number one things that get into our bones. And Everyone has lead. There is no exception to that rule um, because lead ha- has been used, you know, number one, passed down from mother to child. Um, so it gets passed, you know, our bones are formed from our, our mother's body, which will have lead, and that gets into us in that way. And then we accumulate it through, you know, there's f- over 50% of homes still have leaded paint on the walls or underneath it or layers and layers and layers. So anytime there's, you know, repainting done or restoration or knocking down a wall, all that lead dust gets into the environment and it's devastating for children living in those environments. Or even if a neighbor uh, restores their home and is like standing and scraping this old lead paint off the, the house, that will get into your yard and where your children are playing and people don't think about this stuff. Um, and then there's the leaded gasoline. Um, you know, it was up until, you know, late seventies that leaded gasoline was allowed in the United States and that all got into the air and then deposited into our soils where it still persists and gets into our food and food-based supplements. And so it doesn't matter if you're a vegan, a vegetarian, you eat animal proteins, lead is in a, a lot of our food today. And in the water supply, if you have a home with old galvanized pipes, the main pipe leading into your home, or you have old galvanized piping, that's gonna leach lead into your water supply. And you know, Flint, Michigan, that was one city of hundreds that has a lead issue in their water. Flint, Michigan just got all of the kind of the, you know, press on that. There's hundreds of cities that have the same issue. Um, So, um, and also municipalities that are switching from chlorine to chloramine, which is cheaper, that's also going to etch lead off the pipes easier uh, than chlorine, which is what they used to get. You know, a lot of companies, like Los Angeles, they switch from chlorine to chloramine because it's just cheaper, but it's more problematic in leaching lead and other metals into the water. Um, so there's just a lot of ways that people get led and still continue to get led today. And, and if you live in a developing country, they're still using leaded gasoline. Um, a lot of uh, factories and companies in China, all, all that pollution gets into the weather patterns and comes over to other countries. So just because maybe the United States might have, you know, fairly decent environmental controls and a lot of the, the companies have scrubbers on their, you know, their manufacturing sites, other countries do not have those same regulations and the world as a whole suffers as a result of that. So this is kind of how lead has gotten into our environment. And um, then there's- I just ask you a question yeah, about lead. Yeah. So it's so interesting because so many people think, oh, we changed, you know, the gasoline no longer has lead in it. So people don't think this is a problem, but it stays in your bones. It's not as though you could have been exposed many years ago. And am I right about that? That it's not a recent exposure. It could be there from the past. Yes, very good point. And that's what people don't realize. And that's what I thought too, that I I take such good care of myself. I eat so good and I, I take all these supplements and I exercise and whatnot. How do I have all these toxins? Well, your whole life, you're accumulating these things every single day and you could have had an acute 
or a just small chronic exposures over the long term. And if your body, uh, you know, when you had that exposure, if it didn't have the energy or the nutrients that it needed to get rid of this stuff, it didn't have the ability, maybe you have genetic issues with detoxing metals out of your body or just some issues going on. If you're really stressed at that time, your body just got to figure out a way to where to put this stuff. So it stores it in your bones and your fat. Um, that's really the, the primary storage areas in the body, but it, it gets stored all in our organs, in our brain, and um, all kinds of different places in our body. But the bones are a big heavy metal repository for sure. Right. So when it's, when it's there in your bones, when you have the lead instead of the minerals and everything you need, it's going to significantly negatively affect. And that research has shown that there's increased fractures and there's correlation with osteoporosis. So this is really important. Yeah, and it's really interesting too that lead, it's very, very dense. So it can make your bones look much more dense than they really are on a DEXA scan or a bone density scan. And I think doctors are just not aware of this. I think a lot of them just don't factor this in when they're doing bone density tests. So, you know, it takes a really long time to get rid of lead in the bones. I mean, it can take 10 years of really focused detoxification. So, it's just, uh, it's unfortunate, but it's just a testament to how toxic people are in lead. But you can, you can over time, I've been doing for about 10 years, but I'm, you know, on MyersDocs.com, we really kind of developed a good program and protocol to help, you know, really hasten this process. Um, you know, like Dr. Gordon, um, God, I forget that his, his name, I think it's Dr. Gordon. He was talking about how it takes 10 years to get lead out of your, out of your bones. But I think that can definitely be, um, you know, that amount of time can be shortened quite a bit. I really like ionic foot baths. I think those are the fastest way to detox. Um, if, as long as you do that with binders and things like that, but we'll get into that in a minute, but, um, aluminum is another metal. It's not a heavy metal, but it's a, a toxic metal that also deposits in the bones. And it's really interesting when this aluminum is coming out of your bones, you can have really achy bones. Uh, your bones can kind of hurt uh, while this stuff is coming out. I experienced that when I was you know, on my detox journey and getting rid of a lot of aluminum. I was seeing a lot of aluminum coming out on my heavy metals tests. And I correlated that to my bones being really achy. It was really, really interesting. Interesting. Wow. So in terms of in terms of the metal, will people have symptoms? Are there any symptoms that you, you tip, since you work so much with this, are there typical symptoms of, detox, of, of heavy metal toxicity or just toxicity in general? Yes, well, and it can really be any symptom that you have. I mean, I've been researching heavy metals and chemicals for years, and I have um, an, a post on my website on myersetox.com. It's the Toxic Metal Sources and Symptoms Guide. And so that just lists every heavy metal and all the associated symptoms and, and diagnoses that are associated with that heavy metal. I mean, it, it's just, it's a mile long. I mean, it could really be any uh, symptom, but the most common symptoms are fatigue, brain fog, anxiety, depression. People can have nausea. So they, if, you, if you're not able to get toxins out of your body, uh, frequent, frequently, you can have nausea where your liver just is overloaded. It can't deal with this stuff. Um, people can have um, uh, blood sugar regulation issues, uh, that, like diabetes, being overweight, um, that your body has to store all of these toxins somewhere and it will, uh, it will cause weight gain. Your body has to store all of these toxins. They're fat-soluble toxins. It will store them in your fat. Um, and it will, uh, you know, because of the different metabolic issues they cause, it will prevent weight loss. People can have hormonal issues. So like me, I had low sex, stress, and thyroid hormones. So it inter metals interfere in all of those, those hormones. It can really, I mean, it's just, the list just goes on and on. <laughs> we'd, we'd, we'd be here all day. <laughs> but those are the most common, you know, symptoms. Wow. So let's start from the beginning. People are listening. What's your suggestion? Do you suggest everybody get tested? What, what's your thought on this? Yeah, well, it's good to test. Don't guess. You know, it's good to know what heavy metals that you have, because that will warrant what, you know, your approach to getting rid of them, because different substances, different metals have different you know, substances or nutrients or minerals that are ideal for removing 
those, those metals. But, you know, I have a, a supplement line. If you can take the whole supplement line, you'll, you'll start getting rid of, you know, they're kind of very general and broad. And so those will get rid of a lot of toxins that you have. But sometimes people have like weird toxins or they have certain metals that it takes a little bit more of a focused approach, specific nutrients that are shown in the research to remove those. And, you know, uh, in my RC ducts, we have very simple solutions and you can get you can keep getting as complex as you want as people kind of graduate and kind of learn about how to detox their body. And we have a whole team of practitioners that people can work with if, if they want to do uh, heavy metals testing and have someone, you know, guide them and a coach to help them, you know, navigate the pitfalls that can happen uh, when people are trying to detox. Right. Because it's not something that you can just easily, oh, yes, I'm just going to decide to detox. But are there certain tests that you prefer or that you get you start with? Yeah, so I start with a hair mineral analysis because that is kind of the least invasive. It's really inexpensive to do. We have it for ninety nine dollars. It's the cheapest on the internet, um, you know. And but apart from that, anyone can do that test. It's very easy, and it's uh, it shows us a lot of metals and minerals um, in your body. But after that, we you know usually will recommend people do a urine and or a stool metals test. And those three tests will pretty much give us the total body burden of heavy metals that you have. Um, but sometimes people have this interesting thing called the no-show phenomenon where they have no metals coming out in their tests. And when that, what that means is their body just can't detox. We know the heavy metals are there. And I think this is a, a problem with people go to some doctors or practitioners that maybe not know what they're doing and they get a test and there's no metals coming out. And they're like, oh, great, that's not my problem. On to the next thing. But that's a sign your body isn't able to release them, that your body can't detox them. It doesn't have the nutrients or the energy or you have some, maybe some genetic issues with detoxification. And so uh, what we find is maybe the first test will be kind of like, mm, not so exciting. There's not a lot of metals coming out. But as they start doing a detox program, they start doing sauna and taking nutrients, maybe doing an ionic foot bath um, and doing other things to detox their body the metals start pouring out on the second and third heavy metals tests. No, that's oh. such a good point because oftentimes someone's concerned about mercury. So when they're doing their blood work, they just ask the doctor, the doctor will order, order a mercury test. But as you're saying, it may not show anything because it's not being provoked or it's just in the bones, as you're saying. It's not that, that's, so that's a good point that that may not be accurate, that you need to go further. So yeah. would you suggest, yep. I mean, people who have osteoporosis, would you suggest they get tested because this could be a root cause that possibly they don't know about? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, but I wouldn't recommend a blood test because the blood tests you get at your doctors that are covered by insurance are almost, they're usually false uh, negatives because the body doesn't allow heavy metals to just float around in the blood. Um, that's not happening unless you've had a very recent exposure and the body's going, might let that float around for a little while, but it's, you know, within 30 days or so, it's going to tuck that away somewhere. It's not going to allow it to float around in the blood. Um, so, uh, I don't recommend people do a, uh, maybe lead is a, an exception. You know, the, the finger prick test for lead, um, is accurate. But for other metals, and they're usually only testing mercury, arsenic, cadmium, and lead. And that's just not going to give you a clear picture of the heavy metals that you have or that are impacting your health that you would be better off addressing and removing from your body. So I definitely recommend, um, you know, if you're able to, to get a, a hair mineral analysis to begin with, and that will give you a lot of information. And like I said, you can do a urine or stool test after that. But the, the best deal, the, the cheapest way to test your metals and the one of the most accurate is a hair mineral analysis. Oh, that's great. And do you have more information also on the other testing on your website? Oh yeah, yeah, we have it in our store. Okay. Oh, perfect. And we have podcasts and articles and all kinds of stuff. So. Okay. Okay, great. So, so testing, but there's something that you've done that I think is extraordinary. And I think, and that's sort of what I like. There are things every day people can do because we live in a toxic world and there's no doubt about that. And we can't just, we can't just go to Mars or we can't, you know, we can't just escape. This is what we live in, but you have created products and you've created things to really help us so that we're not going to, to really minimize the toxins that we're exposed to. So why don't you share? I'm wearing one of them right now. And I love, 
Well, to start with, we'll start the order you want. I know the two that I, I, I wear my little harmony pendant and I also daily take your detox drink, which I'm not a big person who likes powdered drinks, but yours is tasty. I don't know what secret you did, but it's actually good. <laughs> it does taste good. Yeah. So I created a, a, it's a liver support superfoods blend called daily detox. And I, I was really surprised it tasted so good too. <laughs> we, got, we got really lucky with the formula, uh, but yeah, it, it really, it, it doesn't taste like a uh, normal green powder. It's it not does it. And it I, has a yeah. It has a really nice flavor and it tastes kind of like a, a nice uh, mild tea kind of flavor. And it's a little, a slightly sweet. We put some monk fruit and a little stevia in there. Not too much, um, but it has a really nice flavor, I think. It really, I mean, it was shocked because when I received it, I'm thinking, you know, I was going to test it out. And I was thinking to myself, I just don't like these things, you know, even though I thought, I'm like, wow, this is really good. I was so, so surprised. So it's, yeah. 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 And and I created it because, you know, I, I really feel like people need liver support. Um, I mean, there's a hundred million people in the United States alone that have fatty liver disease. Um, people have, um, you know, blood sugar issues that just, uh, people are having really have a hard time with detoxification and so many of the, you know, 500 plus functions that the liver is responsible for. So this uh, daily detox is just really nourishing to the liver, giving it nutrients it needs to support its function. And, and it's mainly fermented broccoli sprouts. So broccoli sprouts are really rich in sulfurifying. The liver needs to facilitate detoxification. The liver needs sulfur uh, to detox the body. And a lot of people, they don't eat enough like red meat or they don't eat, you know, salt, you know, uh, sulfury type of vegetables. A lot of times people don't, don't like Brussels sprouts and broccoli and cauliflower and cabbage and things like that. Those that are very rich in sulfur, but broccoli sprouts are the, like the number one detox food on the planet. And those can also help with detoxing toxic estrogens as well, because uh, broccoli sprouts have dim in them. And that's a, a great substance that can help get rid of toxic estrogens, but it has a whole plethora. It's got 20, 23 different ingredients in it that can help mineralize your body and help to help just your liver function better. It's got different, some different adaptogens in it and some superfoods. It's got a metabolic enhancing formula. It's got fermented ginger. It's got fermented uh, beets in it. Um, it's, and it's got some other like fermented turmeric and it's hundred percent organic also. It's just, it's a fantastic liver support. No, it's funny because I was putting together, I'm actually doing a class in two days on, on liver and I'm putting together all the ingredients that all the things that really help the liver, you know, like turmeric and the different things. And I'm thinking, wow, it's really interesting that Wendy's detox, you know, when your greens really have so many of these things in it, like. And so you, I think you did a great job. I was very, quite impressed. But anyway, so that's one thing. Now, what's your recommend? I mean, I take this every day. So this is something people can take every day. What's your recommendation on this? Yeah, just take one scoop a day. It's like a five little milligram scoop. I had a scoop in my smoothie this morning and it's just uh, really easy. You can put it, it tastes great just in water by itself, but sometimes I'll put it in a green juice. I drink green juice every single day and I'll put a scoop in there as well. It enhances the flavor. It tastes really nice or just put it in a, a smoothie. It couldn't be easier to take it. So is there anyone that shouldn't take it? Is there anyone that this would be contraindicated for? No, not unless they have a specific sensitivity to any ingredient in uh, in the food. There's in people that have histamine issues. That's not going to bother them either. There's no bacteria or anything in daily detox. There's some fermented foods, but um, just the whole processing. They can't leave any bacteria or probiotics or anything in them. So even people with the histamine sensitivities, the, the, that's not going to bother them um, with uh, the, the, taking the daily detox. Okay, so that's one easy thing that we can do to make, make a big difference because people don't realize that we overstress the liver. I mean, they don't realize that on a regular basis, this, you know, we are just, there's just so many toxins that we're overburdening it. And so I think this is, I think it's important for everybody, no matter where they are, it can only really enhance their health and well being. So, yeah, and I'm a big fan of coffee enemas also to support the liver. I know they're not very popular. <laughs> People are like, oh, God, no, I don't want to do this. Uh, but I'm telling you, that's one of the best ways to enhance liver function. And it helps to kind of purge the liver. It's a great way to address fatty liver. 
um, any kind of like weight issues or diabetes or, or fatty liver, coffee enemas are your new best friend. <laughs> <laughs> how often, how often do you, do you suggest coffee enemas for people who have issues? Well, you know, people can start out with once a week just to kind of get their head around them and, you know, start incorporating them into their routine. But I do them every two to three days and I have for the last 10 years. Oh my goodness. And wow. I can tell you my liver and colon are clean as a whistle <laughs> because doing that. <laughs> so interesting. Wow. And I know you have information. I know you even have a whole detox program that you do, you really guide people in with how to do these different animals. Yeah, yeah, we have a, a, a 14 day program. It's called the Liver Rehab Cleanse. And so that will teach you everything you need to know about liver care. It's really a very well done course. And we go into coffee enemas, liver flushes, castor oil packs, nutrients and food to, for the liver, like a whole menu. Like it's very comprehensive and it's, it's really inexpensive too. Oh. Fabulous. I mean, I think that's what I like. You're not just telling people the problems, you're really giving solutions that yes. can be done. Okay. So what, what other things can people do on a daily basis? So we have your green drink. Yeah. So if it's really important, if you want to detox to start with a binder, that's probably the first thing that you want to do. It's really, really easy. Anyone can take a binder. Some people if they're really not well, if they have multiple diagnoses or health issues, chronic fatigue, the last thing those people want to do is add more fuel to the fire and start mobilizing all these heavy metals that are stressing their system even more. And so anyone in that category, they need to work with a one of our detox specialists to help to navigate any pitfalls they might have on their detox journey. Um, but for most people, even that group of people, you can take a binder because it just goes in and starts absorbing toxins like a sponge. It starts absorbing them from your bloodstream, from your gut. And so that's a really easy passive way to detox without taxing your system too much, without causing fatigue. And, and it also binders dramatically reduce detoxification symptoms to, you know, to help facilitate any kind of detox protocol you're doing, if you're doing infrared saunas or whatever it is that you're doing or taking detox supplements, you need to be taking a binder. And so I created a product called Citra Cleanse. It's grapefruit citrus pectin, which is essentially a modified citrus pectin. And it just is a certain size that will, just helps to absorb glyphosate and all kinds of chemicals and metals and um, it's just really, really effective. But I've also added fulvic humic acid in it, which is basically Shilaji. And that has detox, uh, you know, ability on its own. It's very anti-inflammatory, very rich in minerals. It's just fantastic for the body. Um, and then we also have cilantro extract in it, which, you know, we know cilantro's uh, you know, is uh, notorious for detoxing heavy metals as well. And so it's just kind of like a three-in-one product that helps mineralize your body. Uh, it helps to bind to toxins and the cilantro extract will help to kind of, you know, will help to, uh, you know, chelate and bind onto other uh, metals as well. So can you just explain, because I don't know that everyone listening truly understands the concept of a binder, that toxins can't just sort of leave the body, that they actually need some assistance. Could you explain it maybe in a little more detail what the binder does? Because I think this is so important to really get the whole concept. Yeah, well, binders just, they basically bind onto toxins and escort them out of the body. So uh, even the liver has to process toxins in a way and couple them with a substance like alpha lipoic acid or vitamin C or another kind of uh, nutrient to help escort it out of the body. So glutathione is another example. And a lot of times people, they just don't have enough of these antioxidants to facilitate detoxification. So those are kind of the top supplements you need to take to detox. So vitamin E, uh, vitamin C, and alpha lipoic acid and glutathione. And so uh, if you don't have enough of those, many people don't because they're, they have, they're dealing with so many toxins, their body just uses it all up. Um, so a binder can help go in and into your gut and into your bloodstream, depending on the type of binder, and just soak up this stuff like a sponge. It will bind on to toxins and then you urinate them out. And so that's essentially what a binder does. And it's really important because people that have compromised detox pathways tend to be on the sicker side 
tend to have a lot of chronic health issues where they just can't, they, the toxins just keep coming in every day and they can't get them out. So it causes more and more and more problems. So that type of person is the perfect uh, candidate to take a binder to help facilitate removing this stuff and start cleaning up the gut and the, the bloodstream of toxins. And then, you know, over time, you know, if you, you, you know, you can start, um, you know, you know, graduating from there and taking more products that help detox, but that's a great way to begin cleaning up the body of heavy metals and chemicals. And what about people who are constipated, who have issues that they're just not, you know, their digestive system really isn't working properly. Would you start there and clean that up first? Is there any danger? That's my question. Is there any danger to taking either of these products, especially the Citra Cleanse, if, if they're constipated or if they're is there any problem with that at all? Yeah, it's a very good question because binders can tend to constipate you even more. You have to take them with a lot of water. But you know, typically when someone's constipated, they're either not drinking enough water, they have food sensitivities, usually grains. You know, I know you guys are sick of hearing this, but you know, the gluten, corn, and lectin containing grains are not a lot of people's friends so they can cause constipation uh, but more often than not it's actually um people's the livers can be compromised also they're not making enough bile bile makes stool really slippery so it just slips on out um, but if you don't make enough bile if your liver is not making enough bile it doesn't have the building blocks for bile you're gonna have a problem going poop and then um really i find uh, emotional trauma is a big trigger of constipation as well. People that hang on to things, they are, uh, they have trouble letting go. Um, uh, the, those people are going to have trouble going to the bathroom. It's not always a physical health issue. And I talk about that a lot that, you know, many times people have physical health issues. They're looking for a physical solution. Many times there's an emotional trauma component that needs to be addressed and that we, we uh, talk a lot about emotional trauma at, at Myers Detox because it's a huge underlying cause of so many health issues. Um, I think people just don't have awareness around oh, that. I am so with yeah. you. You know, to me, I, I teach happiness concepts because I really feel that people need, you know, you need to go to the, the root, reduce the stress before, you know, it's, it's mind body, they're all just so connected. So I could, couldn't agree with you more. But the other thing, right, in the liver, you know, in Chinese medicine, it's really it's associated with anger. So oh yes, yeah. a lot of crabby, a lot of crabby people out there. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it's one of those things. If you are constipated, you've got to get a handle on that because that will it does causes a lot of problems in coffee enemas. Those are an amazing way. I mean, the, the purpose of a coffee enema is to kind of that caffeine is to irritate the liver and cause a, a, like a little minor stressor. So it purges its toxins into the intestines for elimination by a byproduct of the purpose of doing a coffee enema is it cleans out your colon. And so I would never allow myself to stay constipated for more than a day. I'll always do a coffee enema if, if I need to. And, and they're not addicting or anything like that. You know, if you, if you can't, if you're not going to the bathroom every single day, you know, you need to be thinking about how to remedy that because it's really a big problem and you're allowing toxins in your feces that are supposed to exit to be reabsorbed back into your colon. It's just a recipe for disaster. You know, and I think so many people just don't realize that. They think it's normal. Oh, I go every two days and it's not. And I, I think, you know, I, I think that it's good that you brought that up. So what other things do you have to, do you want to talk about the pendant for a minute? It's a, yeah, little, sure. a little different, but I think it's, I'm big into easy tweaks. I mean, you know, yes. and I think that's what I, that's what I like about your work. Also, you've made things that are very complex. This is not an easy topic and it's not something that, you know, you just take a pill and you detox, but you've created these really great products. And, and this look. Well, I guess I'm wearing it low, so you can't really see it, but I heard that you actually designed this, Wendy. Yeah, I designed the pendant. I mean, we have another person that kind of came up with the kind of the four holes in it, and it was kind of his concept. He learned it from another doctor also, and he found that this pendant and the like the four holes in it, um, that they they send new information to the body and that helps to reduce stress in the body. 
And it's, it's really, really interesting. It's very, very simple. You guys can uh, click the link below the video and you can find out a study that we did. We did a study with a hundred different patients with eight different doctors. And we found that on average, that people's heart rate variability, which is a measure of stress, reduced by 700% on average, which is huge. And then we also found that the people are sleeping better. Uh, people's, their, um, like their mitochondrial output improved by 530%. Uh, we found that people's circadian rhythms improved on average about 160%. Um, found a lot of other different markers. Their biological age went down by two years. We use this heart scientific, uh, heart math scientific, no, I'm sorry, it's heart scientific software that tests all these different things. We found that people's like meridian flow and energy flow through the meridians improved, through the, the energy flow through the chakras improved. We tested like 30 different variables in this study with 100 different patients. And so all the, the study is all written up and like kind of the cliff notes of it are on the, the link below that you guys can click below this video. Um, but yeah, it's, I was really surprised <laughs> by the study results, to be honest. Um, but you know, one thing when I talk about in relation to detoxification and health is I think people need simple ways to reduce stress because one of the things that prevents detoxification, that prevents healing is when the body is in a chronically stressed state. And, and I think everyone knows they need to reduce stress, but they don't really know how. And, and they don't, uh, and, or a lot of things are, take a lot of time and dedication, like going to yoga every morning or going to exercise every day. And all these different things that we know reduce stress are, are very time uh, intensive. They take a lot of dedication. And so the Harmony Pendant is a very simple, easy way that you, you just put it, you just activate it, put it on, and it reduces your stress levels. And we've proven this in this study and it looks really cute too. It's uh, really attractive as well. And we also found that it protects from EMF. So not hundred percent, there's nothing that protects hundred percent, but EMF is a, you know, electromagnetic fields from Wi-Fi and internet and the, the satellites up in the sky. Now there's, uh, there's, uh, you know, your computers and your cell phones. There's so many different sources of, uh, you know, EMF uh, stressors. And, uh, and so we found with the, with the study that we did, we saw that it reduced the, the stressful effects of EMF by 48% on average. And, you know, with this, the way the study was designed, you know, uh, we gave, we did a baseline on people, a baseline test, and then we, they put, we uh, exposed them to an EMF stressor, all their numbers tanked and went down. And then we put the pendant on them. They only had the pendant on for five minutes and we saw all of their numbers improve, many of them over and above the baseline. We feel like if we had left the pendant on people for maybe an hour or two hours more and then tested them, we would have, we would have seen even better results than we already saw, but we had to kind of just, it was just faster to do it that way. Um, so, you know, it, EMF is a huge problem in our environment. A lot of people don't, they, they're aware of it. I was aware of it for years. I just didn't know what to do. I was overwhelmed by all of the information or the expense of addressing this issue. So the Harmony Pendant, again, is another very easy way to get some protection. It is not 100%. You still need to mitigate EMF in your environment and use other tools. Uh, I think the key technology or Blue Shield is great for like a whole house protection uh, device. But when you're walking around, um, you know, you're out of your home and you're at work and you don't have like a whole house protector, um, you know, the pendant can really, uh, you know, be very, very beneficial to reduce stressors like EMF. And how does it, because I, the interesting thing to me is I remember when I first saw it, I'm like, really? <laughs> That's your first inclination because it just, it doesn't, you know, like, like, come on, are you serious? That was my, I mean, I'm being honest. That was my first thing. I, then, I felt the same way too. I was like, then there were patients, there were people <laughs> who had told me that their son started using it, no longer gets headaches. That was the biggest thing that I heard from people who've used it, that, you know what? When I was on the computer for a certain amount of time, I would get headaches. When I wear the pendant, I don't get headaches. And, you know, this year, especially, we've been so, I mean, the, our, you know, being on the computer and working the virtual world has really, that's where this pendant has just been such a nice thing for us. For me, it's a prevention because 
I don't really get the symptoms. And, but I don't know, because I've been wearing this for quite a while, but there have been numerous people who've told me that when they wear the, the pendant, they don't get their migraines, they don't get their headaches. And, and you've done the research, but how does it actually, is there, can you explain a little bit on easy terms how this works? Yeah, so I just want to make a couple other comments. If you guys want to hear any other testimonials, if you go on harmonypendant.com, we have a, over a thousand testimonials of different benefits that people have had. And some people don't feel anything, you know, it's, it's one of those things you know, that not everyone will feel like the benefits of it, but we found in the study that even when people didn't feel anything, they still had improvements in their HRV results. They still had improvements in their you know, measures of stress. And uh, not everyone is really in touch with their body and can feel the benefits, so to speak. But what I notice is when I don't wear it, like I've had, period, I've been wearing mine for four years. So I've definitely had times where I was, I've just taken it off and kind of dismissed it. And, you know, I've, I was very resistant uh, to the pendant as well. And then I find out I take it off for a couple months and I start getting tired and just kind of not feeling as good. And I, I, I found it in my drawer and put it back on. It's like, oh, wow, I, I, feel, I feel better. Um, it can be very, very subtle as well. But I just, I know from my own personal experience doing that, taking it off and putting it on that it does work. Um, and we've also found that people are testing their HRV with their aura ring. And so people are finding that they'll, they have their baseline HRV rating, which is the heart rate variability is just the amount of time in between heartbeats. And if there's, you're very stressed, you're going to have faster heartbeats. If you're at rest and relax, you're going to have a slower heartbeat. So that's what it's measuring. And so people will put the pendant on and they'll find their HRV improves. And then they take the pendant off and they find the HRV gets worse and they keep doing this. And so people have been emailing me like health influencers are playing around with this and, and seeing for themselves that it, it does really work. And so you can tell out yourself, but there's also a thousand reviews you can check out too. But as far as your uh, question about um, uh, how it works, so essentially there's a couple different ways. So there's some sacred geometry in here uh, from the, uh, the flower of life. And so there's, there's a great movie called, uh, thrive that you can watch. And it talks about how the flower of life, sacred geometry is basically, um, it's, it's the, how the entire universe was created. It's kind of like this, um, it's, you have to watch the movie thrive. It, it goes, I'm not explaining it very well, but it goes into, all this detail about how the flower of life shape is essentially the shape of, it's the, say, the geometry that gives shape to biophotons, which is uh, gives shape to life on, on earth. And uh, it's a really fascinating concept. They have all these heavy duty PhDs explaining all these different concepts. <laughs> fascinating. So it has that in it, but it also the four hole pattern in it and uh, the developer has worked with thousands of clients over the last decade to kind of figure this out. And so this geometric pattern sends new information to the body. So we have an energy field in our body and our energy field conducts physical functioning. So anytime you're trying to correct physical functioning in the body, it's the easiest and most elegant to work in the body's energy field. So it's just kind of like this invisible force field around the body. And so, and this is proven in science and the research, everything on the planet has like, uh, has an energy field that they throw off, like DNA throws off an energy field. Our brain has brain waves that we can measure. Our heart has a heart wave that sends out 10 feet in diameter around the body. This is shown by heart math. Um, and there's lots of other examples like that. So the, and, and different frequencies affect that, you know, your body, how your body communicates is with this heart wave, sending information on heart waves to different parts of your body. It's the same way radio waves work, where there's information sent through the air and you turn into a certain frequency and you hear the music and the words. Same thing with Wi-Fi internet. Information is sent on Wi-Fi signals and you get the information in your computer. Your body works the same way. And so uh, when you have the, this EMF, these non-native frequencies 
hitting your body, it affects your brain waves and negatively impacts your heart in your heartbeat. That's why people get heart palpitations and when they're exposed to EMF, that's why they have problems sleeping when their Wi-Fi router is right next to their head or in the room right next door. And people just aren't aware that the, these non-native harsh frequencies are impeding their body's ability, ability to communicate and function properly. So what the Harmony Pendant does is it sends new information to your body to kind of clear and optimize your body's energy field. And in doing that, it reduces the stressful effects of EMF. That's essentially great. how it works. Great. Well, thank you. And before we leave, because I could talk to you for hours, you're yeah. so full of information. I guess there's one more thing that you created that I think could help this community because collagen is so important for your bones and it's something I'm a big believer. And one of your products has something in it, silica, that actually could help with the collagen that they're taking. Or can you just explain your one other product that I think the community might be interested in? Yes, I have a supplement that's called Ageless AF and it's got um, orthosilicic acid. So it's a specific kind of silica that can bind onto metals that cause fatigue, but it can also help to kind of, because you're for, to have strong bones, you need minerals, of course, you need calcium, magnesium, things like that. But you need to have um, a, a collagen matrix that gives bones flexibility. So if they have a stressor on them, they flex instead of breaking. And so it's very important to have this collagen matrix where the minerals can deposit into, but silica is a very, very important part of healthy bones in forming that collagen matrix because you need silica for collagen synthesis. You need silica to help to process and you know, utilize and metabolize all the collagen you're eating from your soups and bone broths and you know, supplements and things that you're taking. So I think people kind of miss that, that little, that important piece when it comes to collagen supplementation and collagen protein powders, you need silica also. And it's what makes vegetables really shiny. You know, Swiss chard or bell peppers are real shiny. That's the silica. And that's what also gives your skin and your hair and your nails a really healthy glow when you're taking it. It's really important for collagen. So, you know, I'm 48. Um, I'm going to be, you know, 50 in a, like actually less than a year. I'm going to be 49 and next, uh, next month. Oh my God. Um, and so in a year I'll be 50. And I, I feel like I attribute my, my healthy youthful glow to, you know, all my detox stuff I'm doing, but also taking silica and, and things like that because it's really important for collagen. But yeah, it's going to be really strong bones as well. And it has selenium in it, which you need a really important antioxidant that a lot of people, everyone I test is deficient in it. It's just not, not, not a lot of foods that people eat. Um, it also has hyaluronic acid, which is really important to take to in, internally to maintain the moisture in your skin. And it also has biotin in it, which is also healthy for hair, skin, and nail and bones as well. So in terms of when to take the different things. So right now we talked about, okay, we bear the pendant, easy. In terms of when you would take morning with other supplements, because we talked about three different things. So someone who's using all three, when would you suggest taking them together? Yes, this, yeah. Yeah. So the citric lens, it's a binder. So you don't want to take that with any medications or supplements or food or anything. So I usually will take that first thing in the morning when I wake up, you can also take it like the first thing, or the last thing during the day. Like if you don't take supplements at and night, how long would before eating, would you take that? I take it about a, about an hour. Okay. Uh, and, but I, you, if you take thyroid medications or hormones or anything like that, make, give that a couple hours away from just to be on the safe side from the binder. Got you can it. also take it between meals if that, whatever works for your lifestyle. Got it. I take okay. a lot of things for sleep, minerals and stuff before bed. So I don't like taking it before bed. Um, and then everything else, the ageless, you can take it anytime. You take two capsules a day, um, you know, uh, with food, without food, it doesn't really matter. And the daily detox anytime is fine. I like it in my smoothie, but just with water, juice works too. Oh, well, I can't thank you enough. This is so helpful. And I can't thank you because I truly love your products. And, and I just think this is, this is a piece that's missing. It's so, I mean, I work with so many people with osteoporosis, osteopenia, and this is just not something for the most part, that's part of, you know, that's just not something that's part of the equation. And it needs to be because 
people are going to feel so much better. I hope you enjoyed this interview with Wendy and now have a better understanding of the importance of detoxification as well as heavy metals when it comes to our bones and overall health. 